Hi, welcome to this video on increasing efficiency. Um, so uh, we're working through this uh, part of the specification now, uh, looking at efficiency and labour productivity, so these points here. Um, so what is efficiency? Efficiency refers to maximising the output, uh, maximising the amount of output generated from inputs to the production process. In other words, uh, getting the most out of the capital, uh, which in in operational terms, you've got to be very careful in business when using the phrase capital, because we have uh, capital in finance, which is money invested to the business, but in terms of operations, we have a different sort of capital, which uh, is um, man-made goods used to produce an output. Okay, so it's, it refers to the machinery, the factory, these are man-made goods, but they're not consumer goods, they're man-made goods used to produce an output. So, um, uh, efficiency refers to getting the most out of capital, getting the most out of land, which is the natural uh, resources put into the production process. Um, very easy for students to get confused about this. We're not just talking about the physical land that the building is built on. Land includes that, but it also includes any um, natural materials, natural resources used in the production process. Um, uh, Labour is the human input, and then enterprise is the organising factor, the management, in other words, that brings all of these factors together. So I've laid it out like this because it's a nice, easy way of remembering these factors of production, uh, cell, C-E-L-L. -L. So let's just have a quick, uh, and the key to um, being efficient is to make your assets sweat. You want to get as much out of, as much output from these inputs as is possible. So if we just have a look at the example of a coffee shop, the land that goes into the coffee shop, the natural resources, uh, maybe the coffee beans, the labour is uh, the baristas who are serving the coffee. Uh, capital will include coffee machines. And we'll have uh, some sort of enterprise, some sort of entrepreneur and manager who organises all of these other factors um, so that they are able to produce the output, which in this case would be a cup of coffee. Okay, uh, so that's kind of almost a manufacturing service type example. Um, if we have a look at, you know, it's very easy to get confused uh, between businesses and the public sector or non-profit. They also have to manage their factors of production. So in the example of a school, this is a plan showing the floor plan of the school. That represents the land. We've got labour, which is the teacher. We've got capital, which are the man-made goods used to produce an output, in this case education. We've got pens and uh, books and uh, all sorts of IT equipment. Uh, we'll have an organising factor, the, the senior leadership team within the school. Um, and the output, of course, is education. Okay, and the more efficiently the school is using these resources, hopefully the better the output will be. So, uh, we know this from previous video. Um, Labour productivity output divided by number of workers gives you the average produced by each worker in a time period. Uh, we can also calculate the capital productivity, which is uh, worked out by working at how much revenue did we get from selling our products, and we divide that by the total uh, amount we've got invested in our fixed assets. And that can come from the balance sheet. Um, I don't think you'll need to calculate capital. Um, productivity, uh, but just for your reference. Um, so why is efficiency important? Efficiency is important because it determines the unit cost. That's the most important thing, I, in my opinion, is that uh, the more effectively we're using our resources, the cheaper we can produce each unit for, and therefore we can either choose to pass that on to the customer in the form of lower prices and become more competitive, or we can uh, maintain a selling price, cut our unit costs, increase our profit margin, and reinvest in the business. Um, it, it detects, which is going to determine our competitiveness, 
Uh, you could argue that efficiency affects reputation. You know, uh, look in a shop and if workers are sat around doing nothing, then, you know, that might affect their recruitment, people don't want to work there, etc. Um, so, methods of increasing efficiency and labour productivity. Well, there's two basic ways of doing it. Number one, we can reduce our inputs and keep our outputs the same. How can we do that? Well, we could reduce waste, um, including uh, in, including reducing. I'm not sure what I've written there. Including the reducing of raw materials, um, uh, including less raw. I don't know what I meant there, um, but you get the picture. If we can produce the same amount of fewer raw materials, we spend less on our raw materials. And we produce the same amount, and that's going to be uh, useful for our customer. Uh, I see what I meant. Reducing waste, including any raw materials that we lose in the production process. Um, reducing electricity bills um, will help us to maintain a low input cost. And if we can reduce electricity bills while producing the same amount of output, our unit cost will fall, will be more efficient. Um, or we can keep our inputs the same and increase output somehow. All right, so we could uh, look to engage in training with staff. We might replace some cap some labour with some capital. Maybe there'll be a high startup cost for that, but by replacing labour, we'll reduce our running costs, our wage bill, um, and there'll be a trade-off there. Or we could try and raise the motivation of our workforce, make them work harder, and hopefully produce more goods. So, um, what are going to be the difficulties with doing that? Well, in terms of increasing the productivity of land, um, <coughs> uh, producing more from the same amount of land might require genetically modified modification of uh, inputs, um, may require factory farming type methods, um, use of fertilisers which can have an awful impact on the environment, uh, the use of non-renewable resources, all of these things have got ethical considerations. Do we want to squeeze as much as we possibly can out of the land and ruin it for future generations? Maybe not. Um, in terms of uh, labour, maybe the labour is resistant to change. If we sack half the workforce and expect the others to uh, work on machinery, etc., that may have a poor impact on motivation and it costs time and money to train our staff. Uh, in terms of increasing the productivity of capital, well, set up a running cost of capital can be quite prohibitive. Um, it, changing from labour productivity to capital productivity may impact our production um, and our brand image. For example, if we have a reputation for producing high quality handmade goods and uh, we decide to increase efficiency by replacing labour with machinery, that may have a negative impact on our brand image and we may sell fewer goods. Finally, uh, if we want to improve uh, the efficiency of enterprise, the organising factor, well, uh, it can be very difficult to teach management skills. Uh, the UK doesn't have the best reputation for developing high quality managers um, and so uh, the education there is difficult. Okay, so a uh, short video there on increasing efficiency.